Welcome back to uh, Mini Son of Monster Palooza. I am here with uh, number three guest of the evening, but not number three. He was my <laughs> number one for a really long time. <laughs> but uh, Mr. Alan Scott, co-owner of Legacy Effects. So what? Thanks for having Creator, me. Creator, co-owner, co-founder. Co-founder. There co-founder. we go. That's, the, the that's what I was looking for. Co-founder. <laughs> there's four of us. There's four of you. Yeah. yeah. So there's John Rosengrant. Yep. Shane Mahan. Lindsay McGowan. Lindsay McGowan. And myself. And Alan Scott. Right. So and Alan, I started working with you at Stan Winston Studio, mm-hmm. and we were there. I think I was there for like four years before Stan passed away. Right. And then Legacy Effects started. Right. And I just, I just. And they was like, let's hire Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ted, because he's already sitting there. <laughs> I hear you don't have a job now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but yeah, so basically it was around you for fifteen years. Yeah. I think John reminded me of that all the time. It's, he was asking me, it was like one of the last jobs or whatever, and we were ordering something and something about some job, and it might have been that panda we did for North Swiss, mm-hmm. and I think that was one of the first things I did. And John was like, well, that was 15 years ago. I was like, it was? <laughs> That's crazy. It was like that. It does. It goes in a second. So fast. I had dark facial hair. Yeah, I had dark hair. Just, I had <laughs> <laughs> oh, what happens to the industry? <laughs> It's the chemicals. It's, it's all great that to see you. It's good to see you. Thanks yeah, for I haven't me. seen Alan in what year, year and a half now. That's crazy because I don't think it. It, it doesn't feel like it's been like that two long. months ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't seen most people in about six months. Well, there's that too. So yeah, add people. that on top of it. Yeah, so we've all been separated so, from each other. Let's talk really quick because I, I've been saying I don't want to harp on COVID and stuff like that. Not, not well, I want to harp on COVID. Damn COVID, just the disease in general. But um. You know, as far as like legacy and what's happening with the industry and all that kind of stuff, like what uh, I, I'd rather touch that first, and we get into some fun stuff. I okay. mean, but what did it affect you guys with with legacy? Well, we shut down immediately. Sure. Um, um, back in what was it, March? And then so we were gone, just shut down completely for two months, right. and then um, we were able to open up with the manufacturing part of it. Okay. So we've been open for four months or so. That's great. Yeah. So it started slow. We had stuff that we had to finish. That because uh, right. we thought, oh, this is gonna be great. We'll finish the jobs that we had, and then we'll roll right into the new stuff. And of okay. course, everything just stayed closed, and nothing opened up. And right. movies that we were looking at, and TV shows that we were looking at, it was like they wanted to shoot in September, October, push to November, to push to January. Right. So we we got through the summer, and um, and now the rest of the industry seems to be opening back up again, and new right. shows coming in, and. Uh, productions are starting again and everyone's shooting so it just seems different it's very different to shoot yeah um, and I would, I would assume it's very different in the shop I mean is everybody masked yeah. up and it is everybody yeah. Yeah. everyone everyone wears masks we had to socially you know separate all the workstations so everyone's far enough away a lot less hugging uh, no because it was always the morning hugs every time we come into like see it's like <laughs> <laughs> there's no hugging maybe with the other owners <laughs> not, not, not with me <laughs> um, yeah but you know, it's like it's good to ever have everyone, you know, back and in their place. But it's like you just have to be aware. Is it was weird, right? You know, it's like yeah, it there's, you know, all the supplies that we take for granted, gloves and masks and stuff like that. They're gone. It's like right. we can't get any more. Right. So we, you know, had to make sure that everyone was safe coming back for that as well. We re- redid the shop with, you know, not just the distancing, but barriers and uh, all the touchless everything hand sanitizers right. the, all the protocol that we have to do yeah and now the productions are open they're even different protocols sure so um, and that's what's so weird I mean just doing what we do and especially when we go on set for yeah. puppeteering something or whatever like that I mean we're usually like okay I've got it's like twister it it's like I've got my arm yeah. through your arm and I've got this right here each and other you're on top of it we're actually 40 feet apart this is <laughs> the magic right now so but just let you know we're being very careful so. <laughs> All that stuff, but yeah, I mean, it's got to be so strange on set. And I see the pictures of all the different makeup artists with the shields and the things. And yeah, it's you know we've done everything. We've done puppets. We've done uh, prosthetics and just like regular shooting as well. Sure. And there's a you know the protocols are a little bit different for almost every production. Right. Depending on that with the, we're managing it. It's just Good. about learning. Yeah. What the new thing is, but you know it's like the way we were operating is like we've been working together in a bubble for you know five or you know almost four or five right. months now so um you know when we have to go and puppeteers like all our rehearsals are with each other and it's like rods and things like that right. we're just a couple feet apart but right. you know we're prepared with all the people how many tests have you done oh i don't know <laughs> 
I talked enough. To, <laughs> I talked to somebody in the industry just just today or today or yesterday, and they said they've done was it seventeen or twenty seven? Twenty seven. That's crazy. No, I haven't done nearly that. Many. Because they're they're an onset person, so yeah. it's it's a constant. Yeah, so it's regular. Yeah. yeah, I did one. I'm good, folks. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> just on Tuesday, I wanted to make sure I was good for everybody. Yeah. So, um, okay, so that's out of the way. COVID, whatever. That too will pass, and then yeah, we're yeah. going to remember. Remember 2020. That crazy. We all had to wear masks, and we just year. waved at everybody <laughs> from a distance, and all that kind of stuff. It's fine, whatever. So, um, the thing I like talking to everybody about. I mean, I know there's a lot of mutual stuff. I, I've been pointing out to the booth next door. You know, we, the the Cinefix booth we yes. have over here, and then there's the Star Wars booth that's up here. That's so, one of my favorites. <laughs> here at the convention center but i mean i know you and i have had a lot of comment as far as like our love for star wars yeah you're a big nerd right <laughs> <laughs> and if you're a if very you're quiet in nerd industry, you're a quiet nerd but i mean that's the thing it's like if you're if you're in this industry and you're not a nerd there's something wrong it's probably how you got in yes yeah. because you had a passion for monsters or creatures or um, sci-fi or horror or whatever right. it is yeah that's so what, what hooked you people what hooked you and got you in originally originally it was star wars it was star wars yeah yeah i was okay. a huge you know when that hit that changed everything that i that was my world in upstate new york right like, and that that was like everything for years that's all i could you know think about were your parents like Shh, shut up one more star wars thing <laughs> they did my brother would give me so much crap because we'd have you know we'd go through this huge catalog and like lay down and like go through it page by page and it's like i would just flip to the, that section and it's like all right here's it is and here's my list of christmas presents that i want from santa and it's like it's all star wars yeah <laughs> I'm like really it's like yeah i want a land speeder i want an x-wing <laughs> action figure action figures set 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 yeah and um so i have i still have all that stuff and i've passed it on to my kids and they play with it still really yeah because I'm not one of those guys who collected it and then put it away and yeah. just looked at it. It was played with. Oh no, I <laughs> I've got my originals are up there. My my 12 inch ones. My yeah. my original original stuff is gone. Yeah. That, that I wish I had a lot of that. That paid a mortgage one month. Ah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes mine it gets was never mean. worth anything because it was so played with. Yeah. yeah. No, it it's just well mine was yeah, and it's just it was one of those tough times in the industry and it's like yeah pay mortgage put diapers on my kid or <laughs> i keep all my old star wars stuff and it's like i'm gonna do diapers and mortgage <laughs> yeah so you gotta do what you gotta do so okay so star so wars, star wars was it and it was everything star wars i would buy every magazine that i could find right and then one day i saw the droids on the cover of fangoria and i'd never seen fangoria in upstate New York. okay and so i just like bought it and i took it up and it's like and then it just blew my mind it's like oh my god it, it, and then the issue was friday the 13th okay and so it was like and then that just opened up my you know, exposure to horror and makeup effects. Right. Because really, it was like, that's just unbelievable. So now, do you fool around with makeup effects? Do you do any films or anything like that when you were a kid? Yep. Or? Super yeah. 8 films. I made, you know, I made balsa wood little ships and I converted, I had a huge train layout that was probably as big as your booth. And uh, I converted it all to a, a planet and I had spaceships that I made out of balsa wood and I had Super 8 uh, camera on a tripod and I would film them and I made a base that opened up and then, you know all the trains got <laughs> stuff got thrown away and i made a rector set little dolly tracks and yeah. tried to and then just hung them on wires and then filmed it and it was like a rector set dolly track a rector set crane dolly to hold the little how did it work it is terrible i can't seem to find the footage well any of them the thing i like the the thing I like the most is like, you know, I was talking to Gordon about this earlier, is I remember making my C-3PO costume when I was 10. Yeah. And out of like gold <laughs> construction paper and all that stuff, in my head it's like, I think that was really good. It was. I think it was really good. If I if I had a picture of that, I'd probably like that, but I'm glad it's not around anymore. <laughs> but, <laughs> I Everyone know, starts somewhere. Everybody starts somewhere. <laughs> like and you build up, you build up like that, but yeah. So then you were you were doing all that kind of stuff, and what brought you to LA? Funny, was it just that move to come out here and, and do film, or it? Uh, you know, all through high school, I you know I just it was all through the '80s, and that's what I just wanted to do for right. the whole time. But then as I got into my senior year, I just was watching what was happening in movies. It's like it's the '80s, the slasher movies. It's like right. all that stuff had kind of run its course, and I was just like, I don't know if it's going to be viable. To right. go out there i don't know anybody out in california you know right. it's just a little town in upstate new york and i'm like i should just go to school and get a degree and then of course the interest doesn't wane so you right. just see the movies and the movies get bigger and bigger and sure. bigger you know and uh you know you see terminator and the thing and howling and american world and all that other stuff is like 
Okay. Mm -hmm. There might be something to that. There's this thing <laughs> there. <laughs> uh, shows like Cinemagic. I mean, they're just showing more and more behind right. the scenes stuff about how stuff is done. Right. And so, you know, I think it was a junior in college. <laughs> I was a junior in college, and I was like, I got <laughs> home one day. Shh. I was like, you know, I, I, I think I'm done. It's like Somebody I, else's I, dog from the last. I want to. <laughs> I want to go to California. I want to do this. Yeah. And my mom was like, Oh no. <laughs> you got one more year. You finish your degree. You can do whatever you want. Okay. And, and I had most. Of my and what were you going to school for? I got a degree in biology and psychology. Biology. Yeah. Okay. But I started as physics and biochemistry and chemistry. I mean, it was just kind of wandering. Wow. So, so I got my degrees, and then unfortunately my car needed some work on it. So I drove out to California four days after I graduated. Yeah. Just because I had to have some car work done. Well, you know, there's good mechanics out here. <laughs> Yeah, but I had to make it across country. It was feet don't feel like myself. <laughs> I graduated. Get out there. <laughs> so I came out here with like 450 bucks in my pocket. And I was like, all right, I don't know a soul. That's $150 more than what I had. <laughs> it works. I can't imagine now. And it's like, it's, it's so hard for young people now. But uh, my, my first place, I rented a room for 300 bucks a month in up in Thousand Oaks. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was... I moved into Hollywood, you know, because like, you gotta go to Hollywood, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. Where, that's where it's happening. You're supposed to be in So Hollywood. I got a place in Hollywood. It was 450 bucks a month. And the guy's yeah. like, well, I need first and a deposit and last. And I was like, I don't have any of that. <laughs> He's like, all right, fine. You'll, you'll pay me in installments. Okay. So well, it worked out. Good enough. Yeah, it, it worked, worked out. You're still here. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a job lined up when I was here. It was just, I worked at my dad's plant. He was a, a bottler and he, uh, uh, there was a plant out here. So okay. I did have that lined up when I came out here. I wasn't okay. like completely an idiot. So <laughs> not with any any I, income at all. I was an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I moved out here in a Chevy Cavalier two door with a box of Fangorias in the back seat. I had a Chevy Cavalier. <laughs> did you? Two -door. What oh, color? Blue. Red. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Chevy Cavalier. I had my Fangorias. So funny. I had a couple of sculptures and masks, and mm -hmm. just went. Pounded on doors. Yeah. Just it took back me. when you could do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't pound on Legacy Store anymore, can you? No, we won't answer the door. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that little door opens up and a shotgun barrel comes up. <laughs> no, it's frowned upon these days. You know, people ask me, how do you get in? How do you get in? Should I just go knock on these doors? Should I just. Uh, no. 25 years ago, sure. 30 years ago, right. absolutely. Because they'll, they'll hire you right off the street. Yeah. I was, when I, I, my first interview was at a John Beekler shop. And, uh, I did do a makeup school, like really short out here. Um, it was like five month. You remember the, the Institute of Studio Makeup? Yeah. It was on Coinga. Yeah. And uh, so I, I went and did that thing. And uh, not to brag, but everything we were being taught there, I had been doing for five years. And he would not give any refunds. And I paid up front $4,400 to go to school. And I was just like, give me my money back. But the greatest thing that the teacher did my first day out of school, my, uh, John Beekler called and said, I'm looking for blah, blah, blah. And teacher called me. So I called John Beekler. You got a job. Nice. So I went in and interviewed with John, and he hired me on the spot. And I said, okay, so uh, like Monday, do you need me to come in? And I was like in nice slacks. Right. Because that's what you do. You go for a job interview back yeah. then. I was in nice slacks. I had my suede shoes. I had a buttoned-up shirt. <laughs> I probably looked not to somebody from this. Do today. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, like, he goes, oh, no, no, right now. I'm going to show you how to make a fiberglass mold. And I'm like, what? Wow. <laughs> it's like, so, there I am with a respirator on and rubber gloves and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah, right away, start working. That's awesome. So, yeah, and I, I barely stopped after that. You know, it's like there was very few times I got laid off. So, knock on wood, I was, mm -hmm. I was stupid, lucky. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a lot of it. And we've talked about that a little bit tonight, just about having talent, mm -hmm. being in the right place, and there's a lot of luck. Yeah, you know, it's and a, a good work ethic, mostly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you just you don't. Be, if you're up, don't aptitude, be an idiot. And, yeah, and and you try hard, it's like you'll make it. Yeah, I mean, I think I was just so energetic to come out here. It's like it's like okay, I'm in Los Angeles. You know, I, I grew up in Wisconsin. Yeah. So it's like, you know, now I'm in Los Angeles. This is what I've always wanted to do since I was nine years old. So why wouldn't it happen? How many times did I sleep on a table at John Beekler's shop? <laughs> <laughs> I slept over at Steve Johnson's shop. You know, it's like. I'm going to get two hours of sleep and I'm going to get back to work. So, I mean, it's just, you know, it's, you, it's, it's the different. dream. There was it's your no, passion. Yeah. The older you get, the harder that is to do. <laughs> even, <laughs> even 1030 is hard. <laughs> I was with some friends that I hadn't seen from college. And I, it just struck me as like, I was like, when was the last time you guys did an all-nighter? 
And they were like, well, I don't know, probably in college. I was like, I've done three in the last two <laughs> months. <laughs> <laughs> It just, just doesn't stop. This silver hair doesn't come from <laughs> just nowhere. <laughs> that that's staying up three days in a row and yeah, yeah, we did a couple. I think you and I did a couple on that more than our share. <laughs> I mean, together, it, together. Yeah. I remember, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just sewing stuff or doing this. It's yeah. got to be on set. It, you know, some of those Comic Con things where it was like all through the night uh, and it's like, and then put it on a truck and <laughs> take it to Jimmy off. Kimmel. Here we go. Yeah, so you guys went that way, and I was like, going to Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so you so you, you moved out here and you started working, and what, what was some of the first shops that you were? It, it took me a while. I did theater and I did um, okay. student films. You know, I would go through the trades and look for whatever was right. You know, at that time there was all sorts. Of, you know, I just had to look at Hollywood Reporter and right. You know, so I you know UCLA and USC they had student films that were always looking for something. So I did that. And I ended up getting a job done at uh, LA Gear, which was right next to Boss Films. Okay. And so I started going next door and hanging out with those guys, seeing what they were doing. Right. And um, and then he said, "Back like, when you, you could do that. Back when you could do that. You just go hang out. Yeah. In an effect shop. Right. And um, they said, "It's like you know, there's some classes that are being offered at UCLA Extension course." You should take one of those. So um, I went and I took a class from Rick Lazzarini and I took a class from Greg Canham. Yeah. And then shortly after that, um, I was volunteering. I would drive up to the valley and work at Scream Mad George's okay. and um, worked on some low budget horror movies just, just for free for like sure. six months. I would just like, after my full day of time job, I'd drive up there and then work why, till why midnight. Why would you? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, because that's the experience that you get. Because you're a kid and you're like, <laughs> What else have I got to do? <laughs> yeah, this is what you want to do. Yeah. And then um, Rick Lazzarini gave me my first job. Okay. He called me one day on a Thursday, and he said, hey, I'm working on a movie, and because um, I knew him from this class. And uh, he says, like, you want you want some work? And I said, sure. It's like it's like three months' worth of work. I was like, that's awesome. That's a great start. Yeah. And um, what was your starting salary? It, it was like it was like 300 That's 300 bucks a week. Beekler's that was 250 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> And it was a lot less than I was making at the other uh, yeah. place. But I'm like, this is what I want to do. Sure. And he says, okay, great. Can you start Monday? And this was a Thursday. And I was like, uh, I've been here for three years. It's like, I kind of need to give him two-week notice. And he's like, no. The job will be filled. I was like, I need someone to start Monday. Right. I'm like, okay. So I walked in and I talked to my boss. And she was so pissed. She was furious. <laughs> She's like, I, you know, I gave her one day notice. It's yeah. like so unprofessional. Yeah. And then uh, I went back in on Friday, my last day, and she called me in. And she's like, listen, I know this is what you've always wanted to do. So we're really happy for you. You will never work here again. But <laughs> and you said, I hope not. not. <laughs> and I never had really to. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> but she says, like, good luck. And, uh, and, and that was it. It was like driving out. That was the first time that I've been really driving around L.A. and thinking, it's like, okay, this is... This Hi, thing. how are you? I mean, I'm, I'm no, you can just jump in. Oh, yeah, you want me to just yeah, yeah. yell at you? Okay. Yeah. Um, any advice for college students trying to get into a shop today? Oh, well, it's really You give your hard. advice, I'll give mine. Oh, yeah, yeah, you live it. <laughs> <laughs> art. Um, really, just art. Just, uh, you you got to show your potential. It's like... Um, there's so much that you can do, you know, when you just, I mean, there's so much more available to learn from online yeah. you know, than there ever oh. was when we were starting. So uh, all I can say is it's like, just try, keep knocking on doors, but take art, take computer. I mean, almost everything is computer driven these days. Right. Um, but if you're a good sculptor, you know, you just gotta it's the keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Color, it, form, sculpture. Right. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And that stuff will just fall naturally in a shop I mean yeah. come in there with a bunch of skills and that's I mean Gordon and I talked about that too it's like you know kind of a jack of all trades type person it's like I started out so young doing I was sculpting I was mold making mm -hmm. I was painting my thing I learned the first makeup effect I ever learned how to do was how to lay crepe hair yeah. there was a there was a uh, uh, what was it called it was called the moon moon novelty shop in my hometown uh -huh. so you could go in and like the whole wall you walk in the front door the whole wall was Don Post masks and it was like, in my little town, it was like, this is heaven. Yeah. So Don Post masks, and then they had a makeup counter. And it was like those really yeah. terrible grease sticks and rigid collodion, yep. spirit gum, yep. crepe Some hair. Derma wax. Derma wax, yeah, <laughs> the mortician's wax, stuff like that. And it's like the first makeup effect I learned how to do was lay crepe hair. So I was doing all that as a kid. But it's like, so I taught myself makeup. 
taught myself mold making. Yeah. You know, when you, we look at the Fangoria's or Starlog, and it's like there's a mold or there's exactly. this, and you try to find a book in the library, and it's like, yeah, and it's just invaluable. I mean, go online, learn how to make a mold. Mm -hmm. You know, just on YouTube, there it is. Like, there's you hardly have to ask the question these days. Like, yeah. how do you? But you have to know the basics. You have yeah, to, absolutely. You have to figure that stuff out. Uh, it's it's harder these days because everything's so much more demanding when it comes to time and budgets and just especially time. Time is that it's harder to hire someone who doesn't have some experience or at least know because yeah. there's no room for error in what, right. we, what we do anymore. Well, the schedules, I mean, just the, the 15 years I spent with you, it's like and we all saw these yes. just go, I mean, I remember working at K&B, I mean, you guys too with Jurassic Park, but that was a huge film. Yeah. I remember at K&B, we had months to build from dusk till dawn. Right. And these days, that would be four weeks? Yeah, well, maybe we, we get three months. But not like eight months or ten months. Or yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I, I mean, we had. It's I, crazy. I'll have to ask Howard, but I mean, it's like how many months we had to build from dusk till dawn. Right. It was ridiculous amount of my right. time in comparison now. Yeah. Some of the films that we work on, you get four, six, eight weeks. Yeah. yeah. And just boom, or some of the commercials we do, where it's like, can you get this in seven days? Yeah. You know, some of the calls I get now too, where it's just like. Uh, do you, can you do this thing? It's like, yeah, I can do that thing. It's like, when does it shoot? Monday? Nope, can't nope. do that thing. <laughs> then I say, call Alan Scott. They've got a really great inventory. <laughs> but no, I can't build anything that quick. It's hard. You know, sometimes it just takes what it takes. Yeah, and I mean, it's a, there's, there's a certain amount of reality, too. If, if the person calling you, the producer or whatever, every now and again you educate somebody and they go, yeah, I'm sorry, I had to ask. <laughs> They know. Which is always, yeah. they know, and that's that's the hard thing, too. And it's, right. I think for, for us, too, it's like, because we enjoy building so much and seeing the stuff get built, where it's like, it's hard to say no. It is hard to say no. I'm always getting, it's like, you know, when I'm yeah. doing this, I'm doing yeah. that. Yeah, well, I'm I could do for this, or maybe we could do that. Maybe we could do this. Start maybe. problem solving. That's yeah. the part that I love. It's like, okay. Well, Figuring out how you could do it. Yeah. And that's but always. I know there's like, on the flip side, is like, have this conversation with them is like okay I think we can do that and then I have to take it out of the floor with everybody else and they're like you said what? <laughs> why did you say that? <laughs> that was usually me saying that <laughs> we're gonna have this what? Tuesday <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah at that point I've already kind of like reconciled I was like okay this is okay but then I have to deal with the panic of like <laughs> you, why would you say that? you knew how hard you could push us it's like they could do it <laughs> just walk away <laughs> Well, it comes with a lot of experience. It's like after 15 sure. years, it's like you know the skill set of the people that you're working oh, with. Oh, of course, yeah. And you know it's like, oh, no, we could do this. And he's like, you start mentally thinking yeah. the, the team and the people and their skill set. And he's like, oh, we haven't done that yet. But yeah. based on a yeah. lot of experience together, that's you the get, trust in the team. You get a half a day to go, oh, God. <laughs> and then you go, well, okay. Right. <laughs> I guess we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. It, it, I mean, I don't, there was never a time where, I mean, it was close. Like we're putting paint on something, or we're putting hair on something, and it goes to set. It's, and it's like, so close. This smells weird. It's like, yeah, it's still drying. So, <laughs> so many, too many that are just like, oh my god, we barely make it. Yeah, on and almost it's, everything, no matter how long you have. And it's it's, it's like you know, time. I've talked with so many people. It's like foam latex. It takes there's a certain amount of time it takes to cure that. Yeah. There's a certain you know making a mold. It takes yeah. that long. You know, yeah. even just glue to dry to put right. a piece. Of, you know, it's like I can't make this go any faster. It's just not going to happen. But you know, and it's not you guys. It's not you know. It's like it's the production. Just they the, just like they, they want it now. Yeah. And now what, do you, that. what do you think that is? I mean, is that like pre-production? Is that you know what's what's changed in the industry so much that we used to have so much time, and now we have no time? It's all, it's all of that. It's production. There is no pre-production. There's no pre-planning right. the same way that it used to be. And every time that you you make that deadline, just barely with that wet paint, they expect then that is like okay, well we did that last time. And, right. and I don't think it's it's not any one person. It's just the way no, no, the whole no. world is moving forward. Sure. Faster and faster. And, you know, the expectation isn't any lower, but right. there's a little less money and there's a little less time. It's, and, you know, it's hard it, to build Jurassic Park that you guys had a year for, or nine months or whatever. A year whatever. and a half. year and a half. 18 months to build before we took anything to set. I've said that so many times where it's like they want Jurassic Park, but they've got money for Carnosaur. Yeah. Or the time yeah. for that, you know, it's like, yeah. if anybody knows what Carnosaur no, no, no. is, <laughs> look up Carnosaur. I always had a conversation with you. I worked on Carnosaur. Someone just called and said, hey, how much is it to build, it was it was like, it was a T-Rex, how much is it to build a T-Rex? And we're like, I, I, I don't know, how much is it to build a house? What kind of house do you want? How big do you yeah. want? What does it have to do? Do you want an 1,100 square foot house or a 5,000 yeah. square foot house? <laughs> and the, the way I look at it is like, there's always something. There's always like, all right, you, 
give us the box, give us the parameters, and you know, I was like, let's see if we can figure it out. Because that is the fun part of it. That yeah. Is the creative, you know, you don't always get what you want, um, but uh, that's that's part of the challenge. It's like, yeah. How do you, how do you get as much as you can? How do you realize that guy's vision? How do you figure out what it is? Right. That's the fun part. Yeah. No, it it, it is fun. It's hard. It, it's it, that 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 gut punch at first. You know, we need it yeah. in five days or seven days. And then, like, just banging through something, yeah. and you, you remember why you're there. Mm-hmm. You know, and we talked about earlier, too, where I'm sitting here at my table, you know, at Legacy or at Stands or K&B, whatever yeah. like that, and I'm putting something together. And as you're doing that, and it might be 3 a.m., and you're like, Nurr, like that, and you kind of look up and you go, that's the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. That's kind of cool. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, like exactly. that, and you just kind of pinch your, you, you get that moment where you pinch yourself again and just yeah. go, uh, as my dad always used to say, it beats digging ditches. Yeah. It's like I'm, I, I get to do this stuff, right? And I mean, maybe it's three a.m. Yeah. And it, you're exhausted, and you're tired, and you're mad, or this or that. And then you take it to set, and somebody asked just earlier, what one of the, what's one of the coolest things that I ever did on set? Mm-hmm. You know, what's one of the greatest gags, or you know, like that? And it's like we worked on all the Iron Man films at Legacy. You know, yeah. Dust Till Dawn was really fun. Yeah. I worked on Wyatt Earp. You know, at KMB, I worked on great stuff at Steve Johnson's League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, all this stuff. Yeah. And I always come back to this one weird little moment, and it was at Le- uh, Stance, um, where we did the giant squid. <laughs> I love that. The giant for <laughs> Capital One commercial. It was Stance, right? Yeah. It wasn't Legacy. No, it was Stance. That was a Stance, um, and uh, that giant squid. And I remember standing, chest deep water. You know, Lindsay McGowan's over here yeah. in in chin deep water, and. We're poles holding up tentacles, and then the, the jet skis start to go, and the rain, and all that. And I'm just going, This is crazy! <laughs> this is nuts! And I mean, I just awesome. I get tingles thinking about it because I'm looking up at the Paramount, you know, water tower there. It's yeah. at night. This is the same water tank where they shot like the crashed uh, um, bird of prey for uh, uh, Star Trek IV. Uh-huh. You know, the same tank. I'm sitting like Leonard Nimoy was probably standing right where I am, you know, like that. And how many other people like that? I keep coming back to that one. It's just yeah. like, it's it was a silly Capital One commercial, right? Yeah, you know, like that is like all. Oh, this is this is Hollywood. This is it. This, this is, is it. This is this is what I'm this is what I'm here for to stand in a yeah. a, a water tank chest deep, yeah, puppeteering a tentacle. Because yeah. honestly, I mean, doing what we were doing, it it could have been 60 years ago, mm-hmm. because that's what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. that element of timelessness. That's yeah, cool. exactly. And I like to think, you know, it's 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 easy to forget sometimes, you know, because you just get bogged down by the right. business part of it and the deadlines and all the other stuff. It's like we're so lucky to do what we do. Yeah. It's like if, if you think about like, how many people actually do this for a profession in the world. Right. And there's like a couple thousand probably. Yeah. At the most, it's not a lot. No, I was like, oh, that's so fucking lucky. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just yeah, it's it's crazy how I mean, yeah. we dreamt about it as kids. Mm-hmm. And now yeah. we get to do it. I mean, right. you, you it know, is. It's a childhood dream come true. Working on Mandalorian. Yeah. I mean, I got to finally physically touch Star Wars. Yeah. You know, which, you know, at the moment, you know, you're sitting there in a sewing machine, sewing leather, yeah. putting this, gluing that. Yeah. And you have to, you know, you're there, but then you take your head up. Yeah. And you kind of look at the production artwork and this and that, and everybody yeah. else and this stuff is coming together, and you go, Oh crap! I'm working on Star Wars. Yeah, and you see the other things, you know, the other elements, you know, the the, uh, yeah. the Udnot character that we were doing, right. and the, I think no spoiler alert, Baby Yoda, right? Right. Season one's <laughs> done. I think. I think we've been talking about Baby Yoda. Seen that one. If you haven't seen Baby Yoda on this planet, <laughs> you live under a rock. Yeah. It was interesting. There was a we did a Comic Con thing. Yeah. That uh, we had a big presentation there, and um, and then I had to fly from there to this little town in Wisconsin. Was it Wisconsin? Deer Park, Mich- Michigan, probably. Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So I go from Comic Con, which is the pop culture center of the universe. It's like everything about pop culture is happening there. Right. <clears throat> and we've got all stuff on sorts of stuff on display. And um, and then I fly in to this tiny little airport in the middle of nowhere. And as I'm flying in, I just like see this little farmhouse surrounded by nothing but fields of corn, and I'm like. Those kids there have seen our work. Yeah. And it's just so humbling, you know, and you feel so lucky. It's like yeah. all your work gets to be up on screen and people get to see it. Even if it's TV and commercials and things like that, it's like not a lot of people get to do that. No. They, they, they get their, their work recognized yeah. by such a broad 
part of the and world it, population. It's fun because Alona and I have been, you know, a couple times we'll be at the store or something like that, and we'll have on a cruise shirt <laughs> or something, and it's like, did you work in a Mandalorian? It's like, right. oh yeah, I did. <laughs> it's like I just put on it's a so t-shirt. Casual. I didn't. It's like, yeah. What'd you do on that? It's like the Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> worked on that and it's like oh my god it's just yeah. and it is it's that moment where you start looking at the action figures and it's like I made that right yeah. there I did that thing so yeah uh, it's fun very, it's fun very lucky so yeah if you get an opportunity work hard and uh, just showcase your art I mean like what you're doing on Instagram right now is amazing I just I just, I just, I just kind of opened up to that world and you know you just to see the amazing art that's happening everywhere it's, that's it's that's amazing. the thing it's amazing, amazing. I mean and you can find it every, I mean how much did we search when we were kids looking for this and now I following a guy in Poland uh, yeah. cosplayers in Germany and South America and it's, yeah. I get, it's just amazing and the right. community I I haven't bumped into anybody about on Instagram Right. I mean, I, I think I think out of the thousands of comments that have been thrown at my page, or I've thrown out, it's so positive. One, it's so one, positive. I That's I what I was, like, I was really impressed with. It when the guy was like, "We really need to make more of a presence here, yeah. and and share, and you know, as much as we can with what we can talk about with what right. we do." But then, as soon as you start looking and you follow in the threads, it's like, man, there's a lot of really talented people out there. Yeah, it's really impressive. It's, it's like, crazy. It's intimidating. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very intimidating. Part of you go like, why am I doing anything? They're yeah. doing all the cool stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. then you know, I get great comments on this stuff, and I'm just going, I don't know. I'm just cutting foam, right? You know. But then it's like, oh, I've been following you for years, and it's like, really? <laughs> you know, it's like I just, and it, I mean, it's flattering. It's it's hugely mm-hmm. flattering, but it's just like. I'm just some guy who cuts phone, right? You know, and I, I love doing it. It's fun. And yeah, Scott Patton, our designer. I think I told yeah. you this the other day. You know, he's our lead designer, and uh, you know, he's got a big following. And uh, you know, so he shows me, you know, stuff on Instagram. Where he shares me stuff. I was like, this is really amazing. He's like, he said, you should follow me. I was like, uh, okay. He's like, well, let me follow you. I was like, I don't have anything to share. <laughs> I don't have a body of work yet. That's like my stuff. And uh, he's like, no, that's okay. I just like, I don't want to be your friend. I just want to like, we have common interests. <laughs> It's like when I see something cool that I think you'll like, I want to show it to you. Right, so, right. So it kind of opened up that whole world of like, you yeah. know, just sharing like interests. Right. And he's like, you know, one day you're going to have to share with the rest <laughs> of the class. <laughs> you're share. Speaking of sharing with the class, I know you walked in with two boxes. Yeah. Do you want to share with the class? Uh, right before yeah. Before sharing. Yeah. I was just asked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're like this one, Ted. What is Alan on Instagram? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he's got a handle, and I don't know if he follows me or if you're looking at me through the legacy Instagram. No, I started following you today. Because uh, I can watch through legacy as well. You'll okay. you'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. <laughs> so there you go. Jasper. So <laughs> <with> Jasper. <laughs> See, I love Jasper stuff. It's great. No, Jasper. I don't have anything there. It's private. I have. I don't yeah. have a single post. I'm just not ready. But I'm working on it. And it's just, and it's, it's, it's weird. It's like you have a career full of all this other stuff, but it's like, it's hard to go back and like, okay, what, what's, what's my stuff? But well, it, yeah, and, and that's the thing I hate about trying to go back because I've, I've posted a lot of stuff from what I did at Legacy, what I did at Stans and Steve Johnson's and KB, but I, I start going back and I'm going, oh, this is when I didn't have a cell phone or like an iPhone. Mm-hmm. This is when I didn't have a digital camera. Yeah. This is when I only had 35 and now I'm looking through boxes like yeah. this going, oh, I guess I'll scan that picture. <laughs> and, it's like, and it's like, I would have killed for an iPhone 30 years ago. Yeah, no. You know, just... Because just gone. Because I, I, everything I did at John Beekler's, gone. Yeah. Everything I did at Optic Nerve, gone. I don't, yeah. ha- I don't have any of it. Most of everything I did at K&B, I mean, I've got a couple of pictures. Just a, just a, because we, yeah. we all had 35 millimeter like throwaway, ca- like not throwaway, mm-hmm. but just like, you know, we took some pictures every now and again. But, <clears throat> you know, it, even back then, we didn't take pictures in the shops really. We yeah. just, we didn't document the way we do now. I right. mean, you know, I know at Steve's and at, at Legacy and Stan's, like, there was always a documentary, you know, documentarian, mm-hmm. always walked around with the camera because it yeah. got to that point where productions were bigger, they wanted, they wanted it documented. Right. So we had to do it. And then we want to document it. And then it's like, right. It's it's so cool. Yeah. We just had a, <coughs> a, a backup fail and we lost oh. eight years. Oh, eight no. Eight years of, of our stuff at Legacy. It's oh, like, geez. It's heartbreaking. I mean, we've, we've got some reels, <coughs> but so much of that stuff is never. Let me know. I used to take pictures of everything. Yeah. <laughs> I, do. I see stuff. I was like, I don't even have that. That's amazing. <laughs> I'll have to put it all in the thumb drive for you. There's so much stuff. It's like, 
oh my god I took 400 pictures it was like because it was usually like you were on set or you were gone or you were like that you know, Ted, do you have that picture? I was like, well, let me take a picture of my desk and like go around like that. And I looked at it like eight years ago. It's like, why do I have 40 pictures of a turnaround of that head? It's like, oh, that's right. I text like 12 of those pictures to Al. It's like, delete, 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 delete. delete. <laughs> All right, what have you got? You have uh, some fun show and tell. These are, well, I, I was worried that you were going to ask me like war stories and things like that. So Oh, we still could. We'll go for another hour. So these are our war stories. Uh-oh. So... And I've seen them on your page, so I just thought I'd bring this one in. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you would probably, would probably smells like you. I, I, uh, I looked at my my pictures, pictures. Yeah. and I was trying to figure out you when, can I, take I, pictures. I when I, when I, don't I just posted things. pictures. I'll, I'll send them to you. Um, when I posted, I was like, how long did we have to make this? And it was... Five days. Oh, you can see from, from the, the dates on the picture. The dates on the picture yeah. from the time I'm. I did. I mean, I'm sure we were doing like drawings and things like that, like design work. But from the time my head cast was done to being on set, yeah, it was five days. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, it's my head in there. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I can't believe you still have this. Well, for, I can believe you still have this. Actually, I mean, that sat upstairs for the longest time to... Yeah. I mean, as a display. I think most of it's gone. I think this is the only piece that's left. Well... Other than those giant arms. It probably turned into something else. It probably, it probably did. Sometimes things turn into other things. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the fur comes off. And so, thanks for bringing that. That's fun. So there's that that, yeah, that was from the uh, AT&T commercial. The... Yeah, so she, she, was, she was texting in bed. It's like, the internet tells me you're not real. Right. And I was on camera for, I think, I, I counted it as like four seconds, three or four seconds, and I was just like, mm, like that <laughs> cut. And it was like, <laughs> what do we got? Oh my God. This it's one's not, probably not as fond of memory. Oh, my <laughs> neck, <laughs> my neck hurts. <laughs> you, just, you just sliced the face it off. <laughs> <laughs> no, the fact that you. Go grab it. Okay, so I don't, do I have pictures of this on my Instagram? I'm not sure if I do. I don't think you do. Because honestly, I mean, I was, I was inside of this, and I know he did work on the interior. And I try not to post too much stuff that I just didn't have a lot to do with, uh -huh. you know. But maybe I'll have to post some of the pictures I've got from this. This was TurboTax. <sighs> TurboTax, that's right. Yeah. Um, under another monster. That one was in a closet. This one's under the bed. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm always hiding somewhere. But yeah, so this was digitally manipulated and posted. Yeah, it had a digital face on it. And so I was inside of this costume. Uh, we had the skull cap mounted to that, and I was, had my head in here like this, bent over like that, and I had a row of apple boxes I had to walk on, and I was under a bed that we were, you know, stage was about like so high. Yeah, raised set. Something like that. So yeah, raised set. So I'm under the set, big hole, and I just had to push this whole thing through, and I had arms, and had to like crawl through there. And it was just take after take after take after take. Brutal. And I had an earbud. And the, the, the funny thing is, when I went forward with this thing, the suit cut off here and cut in here. And so I had no air. And I'm like listening in an earbud to the um, audio that the, uh, they recorded. So the, 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 the dialogue. Yeah, the dialogue. And it was this British fellow. And I was like learning the dialogue and my hands are blah, 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 and I have to do this action where I reach out and I find the phone and I'm talking on the phone and talking and gesturing and it went on and on and on and it'd be like, oh, and I'd carp back into this hole. And luckily I could pull my head out of this pretty simply and I'd slide out of these silicone, it was all silicone, it's nice, I mean, even this is, I mean, what is it, a few pounds. Yeah, it's heavy. Um, and so the whole suit, you know, I don't know how much the whole suit weighed, but yeah, and I finally, after take, after take, after take, I finally said, I can't, I can't have a, run it. And the medic had to come under the stage. There's a great picture of me sitting under the stage, sitting on an apple box with oxygen. <laughs> and they wanted to go. They wanted to go. And I said, I can't. I just need more air. I can't do it right now. Like that, and Dave Monzingo yeah. jumped in there really quick. And he goes, what are you doing? I said, I just go out, listen to dialogue. And do it. Like I see he's been watching the monitor under the stage. He goes, I can do it jumped in there and he couldn't find the phone <laughs> he's missing all the action and all I hear is cut 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 what happened with that one you've been nailing it every time you pick up the phone and you do this and you're shrugging and the thing with the stuff and finally it was like uh Ted wasn't in that one he was like what happened uh 
Ted needs some oxygen. We killed Ted. <laughs> we killed Ted. <laughs> I'll tell you, the, 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 the capper to that whole thing was, so I was fine. I got my oxygen, and they were a little bit nicer to me as far as, like, repeating. Like, it gave me a little breather. Yeah. All that stuff. And uh, the capper was, I was outside. We were just, we took a lunch break, and I'm getting some water, and I'm doing it. And there's two PAs standing 12, 15 feet away from me or so. And they're kind of walking, whatever. And one of them say to the other, and it's like, who's the guy that's in the costume? And someone points out, that old dude over there. <laughs> and I was like, Ugh. Well, On the oxygen <laughs> well, I, was, I was off the oxygen at that point. <laughs> oh, man, thanks for bringing those. And then the last one. Uh-oh. What An- another adventure that we had. Oh, boy. We had a lot of adventures. Oh my god! I was just gonna tell that story! <laughs> so wait, Ted's adventure as a bear. <laughs> Our adventure as a bear. Up in the An- was the Angelus Crest, right? Angelus Crest. Yeah. Angelus Crest. <clears throat> yeah. The uh, Toyota commercial, right? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was one and I'm gonna blame this on conditions. Totally. Um, so your medical conditions it wasn't my medical conditions I was definitely younger but we uh, so we built this bear and this is on Instagram I know I've got this on there with the muscle suit and everything that I've done and um, so we've got the muscle suit and it's only from the waist up because it's a bear driving a car yeah and so I had been at the shop just finishing up some things and then we were waiting on some other departments to finish up some stuff and for whatever reason that probably mine Nope, it wasn't. <laughs> Another one, I'm not going to name names, but it's fine. Um, and I had keys to the shop. This is at Stan's, correct? Mm-hmm. Was it Stan's or Legacy? I think it was Stan's. I think yeah. it was Stan's. I, it, I know it was at the shop. I, I can't remember the timeline exactly. Yeah. But um, so I had the keys to the shop, so I promised it I'll lock up. And it was like, we're not going to be here past 9.30. 10.30, 11.00, 12.00. I left the shop at 3.30 or 4 in the morning to run home, take a shower. I think I laid down for about 30 minutes because I was meeting you at the shop. Yeah. And then we packed up the truck and drove up to set. And so I had 30 minutes of sleep after waiting up all night, helping somebody finish up and all that stuff. And we go to put the costume on. And the last thing to go on is the head. I'm in the whole bear suit. I'm sitting in the chair. And the head goes on, and all of a sudden I'm like, <gasps> and I can't breathe all of a sudden again. And it's like I couldn't figure it out because it was just like I, I can't figure out why I can't breathe. You couldn't figure it out. It like, and we were, you know, the blowers, we couldn't figure it out. Well, comes down to the fact that I had 30 minutes sleep. And then on top of that, we had gone from where are we right now in the valley, maybe like 300 feet above sea level yeah. to 5,600 feet. Yeah. And so I was just oxygen Constance. deprived yeah. before I even did anything. And luckily, Patrick Romans, yeah. right, was there. And because uh, he was, as a tech that yeah. day, was helping out. And uh, he jumped in the suit for the first couple of shots of that yeah. commercial. You didn't bring the video for the other poacher, did you? From that? No. <laughs> I couldn't find those pictures. <laughs> I needed a little bit more time. Like they, I said, I wasn't expecting the, the talk show presentation. They, they, they ended up in the morning meeting. So, no, that, those are so horrifying and great to see. Uh, the memories just come flooding back. We got a question? Oh, we got two minutes. Well, there you go. That is great to see those. That is so much fun. I'll have if to I had the giant jellyfish that we did together in Vegas, yes. I would have brought that. But that, job, and you would have left it here. <laughs> <laughs> left it here. <laughs> but it was made of plastic bags. Plastic and bags. And and <laughs> yeah, Rick Allenson did amazing mechanics on that. Yeah. And yeah, that was another Stan Winston thing. Another but that, adventure. That was fun. Yeah. I mean, it was weird, but it was, yeah, jellyfish that came in up from outer space, crashing <laughs> a tree in the middle of the thing, dragged across the desert, and we end up on stage here. And yeah. I just remember, I always, I always tell people about it's the weirdest things about uh, what are discussed on set what should we do that you know this shot or that shot or what can we do and i remember it was one of the the cowboys Mm -hmm. that are supposed to pick up one of the tentacles from the jellyfish and put it in the moonshine and it kind of brings it back to life it starts starts to dance and there's lights and all this stuff 
and, we're, and then the discussion started to happen. It's like, well, you can't touch a jellyfish, you'll get stung. So the producers start talking. Suddenly and there's logic involved. There's logic the involved. eight foot with, jellyfish yeah. in space. And it's like, well, this isn't logical at all. And I think I made the comment, I think you, I remember you shushing me. Because <laughs> like, I, we were standing there just going, what decision are they going to make? And it's like, well, you can't touch it. Maybe you can do it with a stick, and we're trying to figure because it it's all slimed up. And I said, well, maybe we shouldn't be feeding it alcohol either. <laughs> and I remember, I remember something like this from Alan going, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> don't, don't throw that into the mix. <laughs> They already don't want to touch the giant fake, you know, now, now the cowboys are getting drunk. Shh, no, 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 no. We don't, we don't need two cents more on this. Uh, well, this Fun has times. been fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for it's having me. It's a pleasure. Me. Very thanks, cool. Thanks for 15 years. It was a lot of fun. Well, there'll be more. I'll see you, well, whenever this opens up again. Yeah, when this opens up again, the booth will be bigger and there'll be more fun. It'll be actually with it. other vendors, right? Oh, there's the, there's the Marvel vendor right here, the yeah, Paramount Pictures yeah. vendor, that vendor over here. It's all good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Alan. Thank, Thank you. Thanks all right. We're going to take another little break, guys. Uh, we're going to be right back with another great guest. Thanks so much.